I'm Drew Stevenson. This is for my professional responsibility class. We're going to be talking about ABA Model Rule 1.8D, which addresses when and if lawyers can take literary rights or media rights in the subject matter of the representation. This is one of our conflicts of interest rules under 1.8. So let's take a look at our provisions here. Prior to the conclusion of the representation of a client, a lawyer shall not make or negotiate an agreement giving the lawyer literary or media rights to a portrayal or account based in substantial part on information related to the representation. In other words, you can't have the client assign part or all of the media rights in the, about the case uh, over to you. Keep in mind, if this is a high-profile case, sometimes the media rights are actually pretty valuable, and sometimes the client actually doesn't have the funds to pay their lawyer, so the client may suggest this. Note from the text of the rule that the rule prohibits this whether you ask for it or the client offers it. And this can be very tempting, right? If the client doesn't have any way to pay you and you're worried about whether you'll get fees from them later, that that you could just have them assign over some or all of the media rights, depending on how valuable they are, uh, to you in lieu of your fee, but you could be subject to discipline under this rule. There was even a case that went to the U.S. Supreme Court about this a few years back where a lawyer had done this anyways in spite of the rule, and the Supreme Court said that they had a conflict of interest. It didn't affect the representation. The court felt enough to justify reversing the defendant's conviction, but they did hold that or agree that it violated the rule. Now, comment nine uh, to the model rules starts unpacking the details about this for us. So let's take a look. An agreement by which a lawyer acquires literary or media rights concerning the conduct of the representation creates a conflict between the interests of the client and the personal interests of the lawyer. Remember that 1.8 covers a variety of personal conflicts of interest that lawyers may have. They're very specific rules, and you really should familiarize yourself with them. They're pretty straightforward, but they also are so specific that they're easy to turn into multiple choice questions on the MPRE or my final exam. The concern is that sometimes the best options for the client will reduce the value of the story later as a film or book or podcast. Audiences want drama and uh, they don't want a case that <laughs> settles right away out of court or and everybody lives happily ever after or something like that. So the concern is that you will discourage a client from settling before trial or um, that you will do sort of theatrics at, at trial and a lot try to have uh, extra courtroom drama and things like that that might not actually be in the best interest of the client if you have a financial stake in how exciting the proceedings are. A lawyer representing a client in a transaction about media rights may agree to have legal fees paid in a share in ownership in the intellectual property, but then you would have to comply with rules 1.8a and i, we haven't gotten to i yet in my course, and rule 1.5, which is our rules about fees. The main concern there would be that it has to be a reasonable fee. So just to clarify, you can't ask for uh, the literary rights in the case. But what if you're representing someone, you're not asking for literary rights in the case, you're representing someone about media rights, about their ownership. Let's say it's a dispute about who wrote a song. They're claiming the authorship of a song or they're claiming that they wrote a movie script. There's litigation like this regularly. And again, a client could assign over to you some of that intellectual property in lieu of the fee because that doesn't create the same perverse incentive for you to dramatize uh, this particular case or proceedings. But keep in mind that if you do that, when you take property, including intellectual property, in lieu of cash for a fee, it's a business transaction with the client and you'll have to go through all of the disclosure and uh, documentation requirements of 1.8a 
1.8i is about having um, basically so much stake in the outcome of the case that you've become a co-party along with your client. And 1.5 is our requirement that fees be reasonable. Here's a quick review question just to make sure you've been paying attention for the last few minutes. True or false, if a client cannot afford to pay the lawyer's fee at the time of the representation, the lawyer may accept an assignment of the client's literary rights in the story of the case as payment instead. True or false? Hopefully you know the answer to that. If not, you weren't really paying attention and you should rewatch this short video. And that concludes our quick lecture about Model Rule 1.8D. Our next lecture will move on to 1.8E.